Hello, today I'm going to be doing a hair video. Um, I'll see if I can fit in two, but they're rather, not elaborate, but they take time. So, I think I will first start with the easiest, which is a twist on the 1940s Gibson tuck or romantic style. Um, I, uh, I remember doing a similar one before but this has got a little twist to it and it might look nice especially for at least uh, shoulder length hair or longer. Okay so here we go as I still have my hair done up like that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I have got my hair down and my hair is not fresh hair. It's best if it's not completely fresh. Um, mine is four days old. Okay, um, so it's maybe a little bit, maybe a day too far than I would have liked it but anyway this is how it will go but it just keeps the hair um, you can style it better if you have hair like that and you're not happy with the way it looks just use dry hair shampoo I won't be doing that because otherwise my hair will get too dry also for the next um, video so I'll be turning around what do you need wait hang on a minute first you need a brush you might need a comb like this and I've forgotten what it's called rat tail rat tail comb you might you will need either uh, one of those in any color that fits to your hair or if you have I'm not sure these are very old so I'm not sure whether they're going to work it's these tiny little um, elastic ones the see-through ones you will need either short or long bobby pins and I'm going to try doing it with U pins because it's simply easier for me you pins simply easier for me to get it undone again so we shall first start with the sides you take section off two bits okay like that I've just basically taken the sections in front of the ears like here off it doesn't have to be precise just section that off and this side here too and you can create a middle parting and or a side parting or you can try with none at all but that's a bit more difficult so I'm going to go with a middle parting for the front bits anyway and I see I've still got quite a mess here okay but this is no no sleek science to this hairstyle so that's all right so now you have your bits sectioned off okay and best if you have your nape done properly I have not um, so I haven't done it lately and yes my hair is now what I think is called classical style I can sit on it okay so now just to start off I will be using one of these and do a low ponytail. I hope 
hope you can see that. Don't make it too tight, just tie it like that. Okay, you've still got your two bits sectioned off. Right, and now we're going to get to the two sections. Brush it through. I'll do one side and then come back once the other side is done. You'll see. So now, what you're going to do is you're going to divide this up like that. Best if it's more or less the same. Doesn't have to be. Okay, and now just twist going backwards. Okay, it's best not to do it when you're forward. Do the first twist backwards. When I say backwards, I mean pulling backwards. Okay. And I haven't got my sections exactly straight or equal either. Doesn't really matter. Just twist. And twist. All the way down. Okay, that's all I'm doing is I'm creating a twist and as my hair is u-shaped I'll have one shorter and the other is quite a bit longer as in about most probably an inch longer because I have u-shaped hair it's not cut straight just twisting it Still twisting. Still twisting. Okay, now I'm going to leave about, I'm taking measure on the shortest bit of hair I have. I'm going to leave, well, that's about two inches or at least one and a half. I'm now going to, um, Put a rubber band around that. Just so that it stays and some of it will untwist a little bit that doesn't matter so do the other side I'll be back with you all right so now I have both of them done they're most probably not quite equal but that doesn't matter either and they will be a bit floppy but don't forget we twisted them so so that they face to the back right now I'm going to turn around and we'll start with the back. You will now loosen this up a tiny bit, divide this in two, and do the same twist like you did on the front with the back part. Okay, so you want two twists. turning around because it's easier this way so you start off and then you just carry on going to the front if you have someone to help you then ask someone to help you 
If you have thicker hair, it will look most probably a lot nicer. But I've got to work with what I have. So twist this all the way down. And then also tie it off at the bottom. But my hair's more equal here, as you can see. So I won't leave such a big gap. Gap, not gap, length untied at the bottom. My arms are getting too short now. Okay, tying it off. Actually, I'm surprised these haven't broken. They're so old. I found them in the bottom of the drawer. I didn't think I had any left. Okay, okay. Tying off with thicker hair is also a lot easier than with thin hair. Oh, come on. Elastic is stuck to my finger. So that's one side and now the other side and I'll get back to you again All right, so now we have our two front and Our two back Okay, so now I'm going to turn around and show you what you've got to do in the back first Sorry, no, I've just rethought that. No, first we're going to start with the front. Okay, so as you see, this is already untwisted a little bit, which plays into our advantage because what we want, we want this quite floofy. Okay, we want this floofy. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this Nice, no, just twist it a little bit more like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take a bobby pin and pin that here to the side. Hope you can see that. I can't actually see exactly what I'm doing no, from the top. pin it down downwards okay and leave that hanging just down here now do the other side okay can you see I'm just taking this and I'm bobby pinning this also down downwards okay so now you've got your sides here and the sides here now you can floof this up a little bit just like that on oh, this one I've pinned a bit too far back I've just seen in the mirror so let's take it out pin it down again like that okay don't go as far as the middle of here so now we're going to take this and take 
both tails through so now you have a twist here and we'll take it through once more both tails stuff them through bring them through right okay now you're going to take both of these tails and separate them and you will start now bring your other tail from the front with the tail in the back Start twisting those together slightly. And now bring this through. I think I've made a mess. Have I got, where's my other tail? Have I taken that through as well? Yes, so try keep that one separate. Now if you have long hair like me this is going to take a while so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to bring these through and it doesn't have to be neat and tidy and So guys, this is just very typical. This is now my second go because the first one was just a mess up. So what I'm doing is I've just, I've taken all the hair out again and I've just taken the one section of the front part and I'm twisting that, leaving the back hair because I encountered problems with the length of my hair. Um, as you saw, that was a uh, well a bit of a fail just because of the length basically so I'm redoing this and I will have cut most probably some of it out um, but there we go I am just redoing this 
and hope I'm going to get this done better in a minute. So I've reconsidered how to do this. With mid-length hair it's a lot easier. You can carry on the way I was showing before. But with this length it's just a little bit of a tangle nightmare. Okay, so we're back to tying this off. So as you can see in the back, I have just the hair hanging. Okay, right. So this is just the way it is with hair videos. I don't practice them a lot beforehand. I have an idea and I do them simply because I don't want to be brushing through my hair a hundred million times and untangling, untangling, untangling the hair that often. Right, so next side. That was a bit much. This amount will do. Okay. Right. Nothing has changed in doing it towards the back and then going all the way down. So this is going to take some editing, but anyway. Okay, as you can see, my hair is rather slippy. If I wet my hair, it most probably would be better, but there we go. Uh, and because my ends are a little bit, I wouldn't say damaged, but old, they are a little bit grippier than the rest, so they once they get tangled, it's super difficult to unknot it. Okay. Let's see if we can do a better job this time round. It... But hey, that's what you get sometimes. Well, this is not exactly a hairdo you would do every day. Just simply because with this length of hair, it'll take a time. It's time. Okay, dokey. Now. Get the hair tie in again. Okay, and this is now where the difference will be. It's easier what I'm going to be doing next. Right, replanned. Right, take the hair back. Get my bobby pin. Oh, that was my brush. That's okay. And pin it down like that. The other side, pin that down. Okay, now I'm going to take all the hair together. That's a lot easier. with my elastic band in a low pony I 
Okay, like that. Right. Divide the two sides. Let me just check whether I've got on each side a twist. Hang on, that's my husband shouting. <laughs> I also get disturbances. Right, there we go. Okay, so now we've got the two sides like that. And what I'll do instead is one big twist. And I'll turn around for that again. It'll make things just so much more easy. One big twist. down to the bottom that's a lot easier <coughs> okay twist the ends the last bit tie those together Elastic bands, of course, are all also all curled up now, which doesn't make it easy. Here we go. Okay, get the ends together. So now I have basically one large twist. Tighten this up a little bit to the head and do the wrap again. I caught myself again. This is the hardest thing to do. Okay, let's try. Let's try it like this. There we go. Down you go. Okay, now you see the twist will undo itself a little bit, and that's all right. Because we do want a casual look. And I'm just adjusting here a little bit, trying to get the loops. Not too casual, not too long. And I've just found a bobby pin. There we go. All right, 
so here we have like a more of a bun I'm now bringing this to the other side to finish this off looping it in once more and bobby pinning this down And now just adjusting the loops a little bit make these a bit more fluffy and there you go an adjustment to the Gibson tuck it's half a tuck half a bun um, you can of course decorate it I haven't got any decorations with me here but so you now got you can make this look rather smart or you can make it look completely beachy by just pulling out bits there you go that's finally number one <laughs> oh, I keep forgetting that working with long hair and doing this sort of stuff is a lot more complicated than with mid-length hair anyway <laughs> See you for the next one. Okay, for number two. This is going to be our, uh, a go on the Vortex bun or the Ballerina bun, which I have shown you before. You can look that up. So what we will need is, again, little, little elastic bands minimum of two three would be better and and one of these for the ponytail so now this is a quite simple to start off with just brush your hair and make a ponytail I'm going to don't do it too low it's best if it's mid head so I'm turning around so you can see I hope you can see because I can't see what you're seeing okay so mid head ponytail And you'll need U pins for this or a lot of bobby pins or whatever you feel comfortable doing your bun with right so and now divide I'm thinking am I going to do two I think for show purposes I'm going to divide my hair in two it looks better with thicker hair with at least three so divide your hair into two or three and now you're going to English braid those two pieces And I'm going to call this the carnation, the carnation bun, because it reminds me of a carnation. For show purposes, I'm only doing this with two. It will look nicer with three or more. Once again, you need to have at least shoulder length or a beyond shoulder length to do this. Simply because you need a little bit of length to show this off. OK. 
Okay, um, all I'm doing is I'm braiding right down to the bottom. Got that other one that worked me up. I got my hair so tangled, it was unreal. <laughs> it took me 15 minutes to untangle it. Um, but having said that, if I would have done it the way that I started, it works equally as nice, but with shorter hair, not with longer hair. Maybe I'll throw in a third whilst I'm at this. Not sure yet. These hair videos do take time. Okay, you can see my hair again, the length. This is where the cut of my hair I have to stop here because this is my shortest little bit here I'm using a see-through little elastic All I'm doing is tying it off. Okay, so that's tied off. The same on the other side. I think at some stage I will have to cut the ends off a little bit. They are a bit grabby. I'm wondering whether I let them try to let them grow a bit, grow the hair a bit longer and then cut it off straight at, at classic. So that means it'll have to grow at least another four inches before I get it all down to classic. Okay. I'm not sure whether this is actually equal or not. but it doesn't really matter. What I will do now to shorten the video, I'll switch you off and come back once I'm finished with this braid. Okay, so I've done both. And now next step is, you've got to decide which way you're going to wrap, whether you're going to go this way round whether you're going to use your right hand and wrap this way around or whether you're going to use your left hand and go that way around. I'm going to use my right hand. So what I need to do is, um, what I need to do is have the right hand side of your braid so the right hand side I'm going to start floofing out a little bit floofing out means pull in and you need to do the loops quite big okay so only the one side of your braid floof that out a bit and if you're doing using your left hand do the left hand side of your braid floof that side okay and your braid will want to curl which is okay that's what it does okay you're most probably gonna have to do it 
all the way up and then down again because as you see it regulates itself out okay can you see that what I'm doing here I'm just floofing the right hand side of my braid And that's why you need longer hair for this. I'm having difficulties grabbing my hair. Here we go. It slips sliding. Here we go. Floofing is not always so easy. If you do your braid too loose, it'll slip out. If you do it too tight, you have more problems doing it. Okay, we don't need to go all the way to the top, not to the very first. but you do have to exaggerate as much as you can on this one side. As you see, it's starting to bunch up here. That's what it will do. So just floof as much as you can. Some won't want to play. There you go. So that's one side done. Do the other side here as well. Also the right hand side. I'm doing it this time from the top. And from the bottom at the same time. And this is where thicker hair is also easier. Doo -doo. Now you can see why I didn't want to do three braids because this takes some time doesn't always want to play and it starts bunching up down here so we have to adjust a little bit okay and you can be as you can do every loop or every second loop the longer the hair and the thicker, the more loops, the better it looks. Okay, so floofed up. So now I'm going to take the side closest to the head that has not got the floofed side, all right? So that goes to the head and now start pinning that down. So I have my floofed side to the top, over the top. I'm just covering up the elastic. If 
you use a clear elastic you won't see it as much and I'm just pinning all of these down I'm sorry if I'm moving about a bit much it's because I have my pins here right now I've gone halfway now I'm going to take the other and tuck basically the non again the non floofed side I'm going to be tucking underneath here and starting with that side same like the ballerina bun tucking that in So I have my floofed side here, as you can see, tucking that in underneath. Floofed side up. Now I'm going to carry on with the other. Once again, make sure the floofed side is on the outside, the non-floofed side to the inside, closest to your head. Right, I'm reaching here this side again and now this is where it didn't really want to play that much so I've not got much floof so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try just to floof it up a bit more right let's see if I can get a few more bits out But you get the idea, with thicker hair it's better and easier. Just pulling out a bit more. Pinning that down. Tucking the end in, also pinning that down right in there, and now this last one. Try to pin that in too. I'm just pinning and I'm pulling little bits okay 
So as you can see, there's lit like a little bit of a petal pattern going on here. Yeah, which would be more pronounced if I had thicker hair. But here are the petals and here's the full side. Or you can just call it a messy braid bun. Yeah, with some floofing. So <laughs> that was number two. I'm going to do now a number three. Right, number three is going to be a classic 40s style, but that is becoming modern again because you can use it, you know, on festivals and on hot days and you can make it look rather decorative and very nice and it's called the standing braid. So first of all you need a middle parting. So you divide your hair up in the middle. Well, you don't have to, you can do it offset as well. Why well, am I having difficulties today? Okay, here we go. This is not exactly the middle, not very neat, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not so vital. So you need parting. And I've already given you a clue, it's called the standing braid, so it will be a braid. You will need U pins or bobby pins and you'll need four elastics. Maybe not four, a minimum of two though. Right, now the aim is to get your braid above the ears. Okay, so you take one half and it's quite high and, and forward as well. Okay, and I have an con unconventional way of doing this. Okay, so this is where your braid, you want it above the ear like that. So I have an unco unconventional way of doing this. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to tilt my head upside down. Put this to the back as long as you're holding this side. Okay, and I hope, let me see if, you can cap if I can capture this. If I go down like this. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to tilt your head this way, divide up your braid, or most probably divide up your braid first. It's easier that way than doing it upside down. Okay, tilt your head and go slightly upside down. And I hope you can see this, what I'm doing, and just do the first cross like that. Okay. So that's how... Ugh. Okay, so that's how I do it. But if you can't do it like that, because you get vertigo or something, then there is an easier way and I'll show you that now. So you've got your two sides. Once again, the neater the back is the better. And you want your pony tight. That's where these come in. Oh, this is broken. Okay. I'm going to revert to this. So you're going to tie your pony above the ear. And depending 
on your length of hair you go either further up the head or just above the ear I'm going just above the ear because I have the length and you make your ponytail Okay, and the other side will just stick to the easy part, the other side as well. Okay, make look that it's more or less the same. More or less above the same height, same distance. Right, and now braid. Just a normal English braid. Now don't do the braid too tight, the first cross don't do it too tight, not this one, okay? And this is best if it is done with a see-through elastic. But as I've broken two, I've only got two left, I'm not using see-through elastic or if you find an elastic closest to your hair color maybe not quite as thick as the ones that I have Still braiding. I'm sorry I left the window open. That's why it's so noisy. I'm sorry. I was so hot. Doing hair videos makes you awfully hot. And it is warm outside anyway. So once again, it depends on the length of your hair. If you have shorter hair, put the ponytail further up. If you have long hair, you can go just above the ear. are getting sore for all this braiding and twisting getting sore so I know today's video is not the best video but I hope it will still give you some ideas that you can take on board and then adjust to your own personality and what you like to wear okay right I'm stopping here but if your hair is the same length all the way around then you'll just go to the very end but I will be hiding that so let's see now I'm hoping that my clear elastics here the two that I have left are not going to break okay here we go
clear elastic, so these small ones are not ideal for my hair either. They're really not so good. Okay, so that's that. What I can, what you can do if you have big wisps like this, like I have, you can twist them a little bit towards the end. It's just another little tip. Twist them. Let it roll up a little bit together like that. Just fold it back on itself and then tie it in. I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to hide the ends, it's quicker. And next braid. And I'll see you after this braid. Okay, so I've done my two braids here. Right, now, if you're in a very big hurry and you're going to be using flowers or something for decoration, you can leave these in, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to go up like that and position our braid. Now, I'm going to see, normally if you've got clear, you can just cut them out, but I'm going to see if I can just pull these down and out. Like that, number one. Right, so now you're going to take your braid, you're going to give it a tiny twist, which you won't need if you've left the, um, elast the elastic in. The tiny twist is there just to fill up that gap. So now you're going to position this and you're going to pin from the back of the head. Okay, I'm going to turn around, maybe you can see that then better. Just pin that into place with one for the minute. Take this one out. Okay, now bring this underneath, okay, because it's going to be a standing braid, take this underneath and bring this around. Now you can choose whether you're going to go in front or whether you're going to do a cross, okay, I'm going to choose to go in front. And pin this in front of my braid. You can go in the back depending on what you want to, what look you're going for, and whether you have any decorations in mind. So just pin that into place. And as I said, before it's easier if you have one thickness of hair right and now I'm just because I've got the thin wisp and I don't want to wrap it round that's going to look rather odd I'm just going to feed it through the loop here come out the back lift this up a tiny bit feed this through that okay so now I've got the wisp here in the back hope you can see that okay and I'm just going to lay it underneath my braid hide it as good as I can of course I can't see what I'm doing so I'm going by feeling I can see bits but not not very well and hide that like so now coming to this now we won't need the twist because you can't see it because you already have this here so I'm now placing that in front 
and this time because it is a thicker piece I'm bringing that around so for that to keep that in place I'm pinning here bringing that around pinning in the back because I'm now getting to the thin part okay and now because I'm on the thin part and I want to be hiding all of this I'm bringing that through the loop here in the middle and I'm now going to hide it in between the two big bits make a few adjustments tuck the little wisps in as good as I can and pin it where it wants to naturally go so in this case it wants to naturally fall to the front so I'm pinning it to the front and now I'm just doing adjustments in the back Okay, so now I have my standing braid like so. That's a standing braid. If you want it to be really high, you can layer it on top of each other. If you're going to be using um, flowers for decoration or pins or something, then it's best to layer each on top of each other, not behind each other. But there you go, that's a, stand, a classic standing braid from the 40s. So that was my last one for today. Until next time, give me a thumbs up for appreciation that I've done this video. If you want to see the videos as soon as they come out, subscribe and press the bell button. See you soon. Bye bye.